There's a split basically for everything, so that's good. OK, so today we're going to look over a few things. First, the importance of location in your apps, why you might want to go about integrating location and mapping into your applications. The second is app map design patterns, and that's basically just how you can go about integrating location and mapping into your apps. Um, next, we'll look at the different options available for you as a Qt developer. Uh, we'll do a couple demos and then some Q&A at the end, about five minutes. So location-aware apps. Why are location-aware apps important? Well, the main thing is that they answer the questions where and why. For example, where are the most crimes happening? What factors correlate to the areas with high crimes? Where should I open a new store? What type of person buys the things that I sell? And where are those people located? Where are the areas that are most affected by a natural disaster? And if a natural disaster happens, how can we evacuate them? All these questions you can answer with location. They also help improve communication. When you talk to your decision makers in your organization, you don't just hand them a table and expect them to understand the data that you have. You give them a chart. But you can also give them a map if it has a location component, like address or, or coordinates. So it helps improve communication so people can understand the message that you're trying to tell them. It also helps make better decisions. So on the, in the picture here, we have a heat map basically showing crimes around a city. So the police officers could help understand basically where they should help have a, a stronger force. And then city uh, decision makers could also maybe look at the factors that lead to higher crime rates so they can try and alleviate the crimes from happening in the first place. And all of this leads to greater cost saving and greater efficiency. If you sell rare foreign cars, you know what type of person buys the goods that you sell. So you can do an analysis to understand where those people live and open dealerships near those locations. OK, so location is important. But how do you go about integrating it into your apps? The first way is through having a map-centric type of app. So a good example of this that everyone probably uses is something like Google Maps or Apple Maps. You really interact with the application through the map. That's your main gateway to the application. You typically have most of the real estate dedicated to the map. You have good, high-quality cartography. You might have some tools on the bottom, but they're usually pretty simple. And in this example here, we have an application that Esri makes called Collector for ArcGIS. And this is for workers to go out in the field and collect information. So maybe you're a utility worker, and you want to go out and survey all of the manholes that need servicing. So you could navigate through the map how to get there, tap on the map, and when you get there, fill out some information about the, about the quality or about the uh, current um, the, the manhole, basically, and sync it back to the, to the cloud and move on to the next one. You can also have a map as a navigational tool. So this example here is an app developed with our uh, SDKs that we develop at Esri. And this is a, called QuakeFeed. And basically, it shows quakes, earthquakes happening around the world. It has a list view on the left side and a map on the right. So it's kind of um, part of the screen flow. But really, you can interact through the map or through the list view. It's pretty similar to a lot of real estate apps that you see now. You can basically navigate and click on a feature in the list view, and then it will zoom to the map location. Or you can interact with the map and, and uh, navigate the information through that. It's usually a bit more simple cartography. Here we have uh, basically a uh, class breaks render applied to the map, so you can see the different um, the different points change colors as they, be, as they grow in magnitude. Sometimes a map is really just needed for context. So in this example from NOAA, you're looking at a weather forecast. And the weather forecast, you don't necessarily need a map. You could drop that out, and you'd still be able to understand the, uh, the patterns for the day that they're predicting. But if you can have a map showing where, it, where you're looking at, and also maybe a radar image coming through, that helps give more context to the information. And then you can also have completely mapless apps. And this is actually a really effective way to get location into your apps. 
Sometimes you don't need to mess around with a map and have it be a clunky design. So for example, the city of Redlands made this 311 app, and if a, a citizen downloads it and sees an issue around the city, they can go ahead and report it, and it will grab the location from their device, sync it up with the server, they take an image, and the city then knows that there's an issue that they need to take care of at that given location. So if you want to take location and put it in your Qt based app, you really have two options. The first is Qt location module. Has anybody here used Qt location before? Couple, okay. And then also ArcGIS Runtime SDK for Qt, which is the team that I work on. We, we build this SDK. Has anyone used that before? Okay, a couple as well. So I'll start with Qt location, because this is really your entry point for using location in a Qt based application. It's really a Qt quick based uh, technology. So it's great for your QML based apps. Its sweet spot is really displaying maps, adding graphics, doing searching for addresses, which we call geocoding in the GIS world, and point to point routing. Those are the main features that you're going to get with Qt location. You can also add your location to the map with a module called Qt Positioning. And one of the really cool things about it is that it uses a plugin model so that location providers can basically write a plugin and drop it into the Qt install and access uh, different uh, tile providers for different maps. So currently, with 5.6 and 5.7, you can use OpenStreetMap for the provider. You can use here, and then you can use Mapbox. But what I'm excited to announce is that at 5.8, Esri is going to actually be a provider for the Qt Location plugin. So this will give access to 12 different base maps that we have, which includes world imagery, uh, terrain, topography, National Geographic, the light and dark gray canvas, which are really nice for different visualizations. Um, we'll also have access to the world geocoding service, which will give access to uh, basically address searching for the entire world, which is really awesome. And then we'll also have access to the world routing service, which will allow for point-to-point -point routing. So one thing that's cool about this plugin is that it's actually going to enable you to do base map displays, geocoding, and routing all with one provider. So I'll do a quick demo of that. So this is uh, using Qt Location, displaying a base map. Oh. OK, one sec. There we are. OK, so this is using the Qt Location uh, Esri Geo Service plugin. And it's displaying the streets base map. And you can see it has nice performance, um, just the same as all of the other Qt location uh, providers. You can also switch between different base maps. So here I've got the world imagery. And you could also go to, for example, the world topography. I can also do geocoding, so searching for different addresses. I'll try 1000 Lombard Avenue. So it found the location, got me the coordinates, and then dropped a point or an area on the map here. So that is cute location in a nutshell. And we'll jump back to the slides. OK, so that's Qt Location. Your second option, if you want to integrate mapping and location into your apps, is ArcGIS Runtime SDK for Qt. And this is really for when you want to start doing more than just placing points and graphics on the map and doing some routing. Um, some of the key things that you can do in addition to the capabilities of Qt Location, um, the first and one of the most important things is that we have C++ 
and QML APIs. So if you use Qt widgets, you can use uh, this SDK. If you want to write in QML, you can do that as well. For mapping and visualization, we have 2D, just like Qt location, but we also have 3D support. We also have support for different, uh, more specialized symbology sets, so military symbology like MIL 2525B standard and C standard and D standard. So that's really pretty cool. Um, we also have geo-searching and routing. We can do indoor and outdoor routing, which is really cool. Uh, so one thing that's really popular right now is to do indoor routing applications with 3D. We also have support for vector tiles. Does anybody here know what vector tiles are? Cool, so vector tiles are basically, um, if you use Apple Maps or Google Maps, instead of having the old raster-based uh, tiles that come in, it actually sends vector data down and you get really nice panning and zooming. Um, so that's really cool, we support that with ArcGIS Runtime. We can also display local raster files, so TIFFs and JPEGs and all the different uh, raster types. You can display those and then apply renders to them. I'll show a little bit about that in just a little bit. Um, advanced spatial analysis. So this is really where we, uh, our, our sweet spot with Esri is doing spatial analysis. So trying to understand uh, hill shade, uh, line of sight, viewpoint, things like that. You can do that all with ArcGIS Runtime. And one of the coolest things is that you can work in completely, all of these things work in completely disconnected environments. So you can use it in online, but you can also do these all completely disconnected from the network. Over. So this is an example here using ArcGIS Runtime showing a visualization of a mission replay. So basically, this is a helicopter 3D model, and it's flying over the Grand Canyon right now. So it really helps give an, ex an idea of, of what the pilot just saw when they were out in the field doing this mission. This here is an example of displaying a TIFF file and then applying a hillshade render on the fly to it. So really, it's just a, a standard raster file. But on the fly, we apply this TIFF, or the hillshade render. And you can see it has really nice performance. And we get these really nice uh, shaded relief raster layers. Uh, it's pretty small. but. Um, just to give you an idea of what the code looks like, basically, this is using our C++ API in Qt Quick. So we get access to the map view. The map view is what actually displays the uh, map in the scene, and it's using a Qt Quick item. Then we create a base map using the topographic base map. And then we create a map using that base map and apply it to the map view. So that gives us, let's see this live sample right here. So pretty simple to get a map up and running with the SDK. And one final demo I wanted to show was this charting application. So this uses uh, cute charts. And it displays a choropleth map in the background showing median household income. And it's really designed to be a data explorer. So you can go around and click around the map and start to see the different crime rates that are happening around the city of Los Angeles. So for example, if I click up here, it queries the service, aggregates all the data, and then updates the charts on the right side with some neat animations. So this is kind of an, an example of how you can go beyond uh, just showing data in a table and making it interesting and making it interactive for the user to explore on their own. So if you want to know more, I know it's the end of the conference, but you can come up afterwards and ask me a few questions. I would encourage you all to go to developers.arcgis.com forward slash Qt. You can download the SDK for free. You can read the conceptual doc, see the API reference, look at the different samples that we have. Um, you can email me if you have any questions. And with that, I'd like to open it up. All right. Uh 
Hello. Two questions. Uh, the first demo you showed, the Qt location, uh, is that available in Qt now and, and uh, starting in what version? And second question, uh, when you release, when Esri takes on the, the Qt location plugin, what will be the licensing for that? Uh, so the first question, as far as when is that available, Qt Location itself is available now in 5.6 and 5.7 with the three providers that I mentioned here, Mapbox and OpenStreetMap. Esri will be available with 5.8 install. Um, as far as licensing, I would need to double check with my product manager afterwards, um, but it would basically involve uh, in getting a developer account with us and then uh, depending on what functionalities you use, it changes from there. So if you want to come up afterwards, we can get you on the, on the right track with that. Do any of the Qt location provider plugins uh, handle locally stored map tiles well? Um, last I checked, I didn't see anything like that. Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, the, yeah, not that I'm aware of. It's possible that you could write your own uh, provider and do it all on your own if you wanted to. Oh, you already did that. OK. There's a licensing issue with that? Yeah, you would want to check with wh wherever you got the tiles from to make sure that you had the, uh, the licensing uh, abilities to do that. Yep. Anything else? We've got stickers and t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> no? All right. Cool. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. Thank you very much, Luke. Okay. That was a pretty cool talk. Pretty cool demo.